Hi, welcome to Joe Vision video tutorial for 2015 VIP trainings. My name is Derek. Who is going to be the trainer for this uh, video tutorial? So let's get started. As you guys can see here, these are the topics that we're going to cover for this uh, video tutorial. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, Joe Vision IP cameras, like what kind of cameras they are going to be released in this year. And uh, for the MyJuvi Cloud and Juvi Storage System V2, uh, we, for these two topics, we're gonna focus more on their implementation. And we're going we're going to talk about the uh, Vision PoE and uh, Joe Vision Video Server. For the video server, we're going to release a video server that supports um, two megapixel resolution because the current video server it only supports up to D1 resolution. And for the next four topics, uh, VMS, Azure Recording Manager, and uh, GVI, and Ace Managers, we're going to focus more on the features that we're going to add on the next version release. And last one is uh, Dual Vision LPR cameras. Uh, we're going to show you guys the current two types of LPR cameras when we reach the slide. Let's go start with the first topic, Dual Vision IP camera. So what is P-Iris? Basically a camera with a P-Iris, it can provide a better depth of field and a sharper image. Let's take a look of the pictures here. On the left hand side, this is a picture taken by the camera with the P-Iris lens. And on the right hand side, this is a picture taken by the camera with the conventional lens. It is obvious that on the left hand side, the picture with the ray circles, you can tell it has a better depth of field and a sharper image compared with the right hand side picture. So uh, what is P-Iris? As you guys can see here, uh, the left hand side is a picture taken by the camera with the P-Iris. And on the right hand side, this is a picture taken by the, co uh, by the camera with the conventional lens. It is obvious that uh, the left hand side, it provides a better, a better depth of field and a sharper image. The part with the red circle here, this is basically our newly physical design. So what can we get? Uh, what the what are the advantages can we get from this little box? The, this little box helps you to uh, put all of the cable together. This is the first advantage. And the second advantage is it also it provides a better waterproof effect. So uh, currently we have an uh, iron bullet camera with a PRS. We have a motorized iron, uh, iron bullet camera with a PRS. And the last one, we have an Arctic plug have an Arctic plus motorized bullet camera with the PRS. Uh, Arctic means this camera support a wide operating temperature. And the first fish eye camera with a 12 megapixel in dual vision. Um, as you guys can tell, uh, the physical design, um, this cover is black. So why we use black? Because we think a black is cool? No way. We actually have a reason behind this. Because uh, by using this color of a cover, by this combination, it provides a better light transmissions. This is the main point uh, why we use this color of the cover. And this is a 12 megapixel camera. You can have a with the 15 FPS. And also, you can have an 8 megapixel with the 30 FPS. And uh, there, there is another important point here is that this is also the first cam fish guide camera that supports dual stream. So far, there is no fisheye camera in dual vision that supports dual stream. So this is the first camera that supports dual stream. So what can we have, what the advantages can we have, um, can we have for adopting a camera, fisheye camera that supports dual stream? Means that you can have more cameras that can be connected to multi-cam or VMS. This is the main advantages. And uh, for the rest uh, of the spec for this camera, uh, basically they're pretty similar with the uh, current fisheye camera. So we can, you guys can just take a quick look. And this camera is expected to be released in Q3. Okay, the next going camera is also uh, the other 12 megapixel camera, dual vision, not only fisheye camera. Uh, so you guys can see. Um, the parts with the red circle here, uh, this size of the camera lens can provide you guys a better image than other original fisheye, the other original Juvie box type camera. 
and uh, this is a 12 megapixel. It gives it gives you a 15 FPS, and if you want to, and also can have a 8 megapixel with a 3F with 30 FPS. And as you guys can see here, the spec for this camera is pretty similar to our original Bosai camera. And this camera, the release date for this camera is expected to be Q2. So these two types of cameras are the perfect solution for people who are looking for a high resolution cameras designed for securing areas such as airport, passport control, and even casino. The next one is a camera, is one of our Bostec camera called the BX2600. This is a camera with a 2 megapixel, uh, provides 60 FPS. Here's the point, 60 FPS. Because for other 2 megapixel camera in dual vision, it only supports up to 30 FPS. But for this camera, it, only, it can support up to 60 FPS. And this is a built-in Building camera. This is a camera with the built-in video analysis. We're going to talk about a little bit, a little bit more about the video analysis in the next slide. And also, this camera. This is another point for uh, on this slide. This camera some, uh, with uh, both the WDR Pro and Super Low Loss feature built building on the camera itself, so that this camera can smartly detect it. Uh, can smartly switch to either WDR mode or super low lux mode based on based on the camera the camera sensor it detects and uh, and the release date for this camera is expected to uh, be in Q2. Okay, like we just talked about in the previous slide, uh, this camera is a building has a built-in VA feature and here are the features that the camera support. Uh, this camera support intruder, people count, loitering, advanced motion detections uh, on, on a tenant object and missing object. And the last one is tampering alarm. So what is loitering? Loitering basically is a feature that detect an object or, uh, an peop or a people that has been staying in a predefined area over a period of time. So, by the way, uh, there's a very important uh, point that I want to mention here is that um, the more VA feature you apply on this camera, uh, the more FPS is going to be cut off. Okay, the next camera is called Unicam camera. So, why these cameras are unique? Because the camera lens and the camera body, they can be separated. So far, we have uh, two types of camera lens for both the indoor use and outdoor use. For the indoor use, we have uh, a pinhole camera lens, and for the outdoor use, we have a mini fisheye camera lens. Even though this camera is small, but it still supports a lot of features such as one-way audio, building microfilm, and micro SD card. And uh, for the pinhole camera lens, it is expected to be released in Q2. And for the fisheye camera lens, it is expected to be released in Q3. You guys can see the cameras, uh, they're pretty small, uh, they're easy to install, and the most important thing is that they are hard to be detected. Like what kind of, under what kind of situation can we apply such kind of camera? The first, the first example is ATM. And the other two examples is are, um, you can apply this camera in museum. So why museum? It's kind of hard to understand, right? Uh, basically, you can uh, have the camera installed behind the wall of the showcase, so the security staff can actually watch it. Who, if there's someone who is going to break the window of the showcase, and the third example is that you can apply this camera in the police department as well. Why? Because sometimes police officer don't really, uh, when they are expecting uh, criminals or suspect, they don't really want them to be to know they're actually being monitoring. So we can use this camera um, in uh, such kind of uh, situation. Okay, the next camera is our uh, is a speedo camera. This is a two megapixel camera, gives you a thirty fps. And uh, the most important thing here is that about half the way is cut off, okay? Uh, comparing, with, uh, comparing with the current speed on camera. So here is the main point. It becomes, 
it becomes live uh, comparing with uh, our current speed of camera, SD220. About halfway has been cut off. So now this camera is about the 2.3 kilograms. And also this camera supports WDR Pro. And another characteristic is uh, this camera's uh, operating temperatures. It supports from the minus 40 degree to 70 degree in Celsius. Comparing with other speed, uh, other third party speed on cameras, they can only support up to 60 degrees. But for this camera, SD2301, it can support up to 70 degree in Celsius. As we talked about in the previous slide, this camera now becomes much lighter than other dual vision speed on cameras. Let's watch a video clip about how easy to install this camera. This is a camera it's called the PPTC 7300 and the surveillance video models, uh, like we just uh, like we just introduced uh, in the pre in the very beginnings. Uh, this is a camera with combination of uh, 5 megapixel fisheye cameras and plus 2 megapixel PD, uh, PDZ lens cameras. So it means that you're going to have the two live images on the browser. When you, when you, op when you try to open the browser, there's going to be two live images display on the interface. So uh, you can just uh, you can move your mouse cursor on the live view of the fisheye and once you click uh, the PTZ cameras will automatic, automatically track the point you click. This is our the PPTZ7300 and uh, the release date is going to be Q4. And then the bottom one is a, cam is a camera called SV. Uh, basically there are four camera lens encrypted inside the camera and each camera is, will support up to 5 megapixel. This camera is also um, expected to be released in Q4. Our bullet type camera called BL5700. Uh, this is a 5 megapixel camera with uh, 3 FPS. Uh, as you guys know, in GeoVision current profit line, 5 megapixel camera, it can only support up to 10 FPS. But for this camera, it can support up to three, uh, up to 30 FPS. 30, 30 FPS. It's going to be the first camera with the H.265. So H.265 is the next gen is the next video comp is the next generation of video compression technology after H.264. We're going to talk about a little bit more about uh, what's H.265. And for the rest of the spec of this camera, it supports uh, pretty much this uh, pretty much just features like other bullet camera support. And this camera is expected to be released in Q3. Okay, so uh, five megapixel camera with the H.265. What advantages can we expect from uh, such kind of technologies? Uh, the advantages from the cameras that support H.265 it gonna it gonna help you reduce the bad rates of the camera means that you gotta have more spaces for the recording. The next topic is uh, called my GB Cloud. My GB Cloud is a, is a series of uh, lightweight, easy to easy to install network camera designed for small business. Like you can my, you can use my GB Cloud camera in your past in the past store or retailer, kindergarten, or even your home. And as you guys can see here, these are the these four are the current the GB Cloud camera types we have in our product line. All of the cameras, they are 1.3 megapixel. And the first one, it is this, uh, this is a ultra bullet camera, which is uh, for outdoor, it support IP67 and IK10. And the camera is built in with the IR feature, so it's pretty good for the night vision. And the next one is uh, our the box type camera. Is uh, it, this is a camera for indoor use, and is it, it has a built-in with built-in IR feature. And this camera is also good for night vision. And the next one is called Cube Cameras. This is the only camera that support Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay, only this camera. The other three cameras doesn't uh, don't support the Wi-Fi connect connectivity. And the last one is our the mini fixed dome camera. 
and this camera supports super low locks. It's very good when you use this camera in a very low light condition. So once you have installed your cameras and you have created your own Light UV clouds, now it's, now it's time to watch a live view. Uh, we have um, a weight base um, called my GB Cloud Protocol through the this uh, my GB Cloud Protocol website. You can watch a live view or the remote playback or even take a snapshot or do the other camera configuration through the my GB Cloud portal. Or even you if you're not if you're not home, you're outside or you or you're out of office, we also have an application for the mobile devices. It supports uh, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, this, the, the main feature for this My Cloud Cam, it on, you can uh, watch a live view, of course, or remote playback, or even do even through the application. You can do the stop monitoring or start monitoring. Okay, when there is motion detected, you can record a video directly to the micro SD card. Or also, you can back up the record data to our G my GB Cloud storage. And uh, basically, uh, for the, each single my GB Cloud camera, it is it is required to purchase a license. And we have a three plans here. We have a seven days plan, we have a 15 days plan, and 30 days plan. So what do these days mean? Uh, for the seven, let's take an example here. So seven days means that the latest, the latest seven days video data will always be stored in GB Cloud Storage. Okay, seven days. So if this is a 15 days, the latest 15 days video data will be always stored in my GB Cloud Storage. You have a three points. Okay, the next topic is called my GV is my it's called GV Storage System V2. So let's take a quick look of the definition here. Uh, GV Storage System V2 is an IP sense storage device through the TCP/IP and iSCSI protocol to exchange data and to save large volumes of a video audio from various GV software. Hmm, it's kind of hard to understand, right? But uh, just let me make this uh, more easier for you guys to understand. Um, basically, GV Storage System V2 is a huge external hard drive. How that sounds? Now it's easy to understand, right? It's just a big external hard drive for recording purposes. And through the iSCSI communication protocol, which is here, once the connection between the GB system and GB storage system V2 established, you can assign the compatible GB, GB products to record to the GB storage system V2 directly. And uh, this, is a, this is how exactly uh, the front panel and rear panel looks like. As you guys can see, this is a real panel of the GB Storage System V2. Uh, this six uh, giga port is for data transmission. Okay, we have a six port here. Uh, each port supports a giga, one giga. And as you guys, this is for a web management port for you to do the configuration, to build your array, and stuff like that. Your hard hard disk array. And we have a two fans here. So once there is a fan is not working, the other fan is going to take over. We have two fans here. And this is a UPS. It's, a design, it's specially used for when the, there is an unexpected power, shelf, power shutdown. Um, basically, each uh, GB storage system V2, it can support up to 144 terabytes. But if a client's looking for more recording spaces, what should we do? Don't worry, we actually we have a backup plan, which is uh, called, which it, the devices is called expansion system. So the Mixmon expansion system, you can connect it to GB storage system V2 is to up to seven. So one plus seven means that you're gonna got a system. So uh, the total the total recording spaces you will have one forty four terabyte. One forty four terabytes times eight, you got this uh, 
recording spaces. So how do we connect the expansion system to our uh, GV storage system V2? Uh, this is how we connect it, uh, how we get these two devices connected to each other. Just remember, uh, when you connect the expansion system to the GP storage system V2, always is the left-hand side port, okay? The right-hand side port is for the next expansion system. I believe this is one of the questions that, uh, that most uh, customers uh, might be curious about. Uh, this is uh, the test result from our FA department, and under this uh, test scenario, uh, here is um, before we look at this chart of both. This, this uh, read this for you guys because this is kind of a small to read uh, with a bat rate limit equal to uh, 2700 megabytes per second, and uh, our FA used RAID 5 with a four hard disk in the group. Okay, and each group is uh, six terabytes. Under this uh, test scenario, and uh, we said. Uh, we record a video 24 hours a day with the with, uh, H.264 and we use 1.3 megapixel camera and the average bit rate here is 1.3, 1.73 and the total channels our FA got is about uh, 1,560 channels and the max recording days is about, 20, is about 26 days and under this test situations you can have the 12 recording server or the 12 BMS or 48 MVR to be recorded to the GV storage system V2. And if you use 2 megapixel camera and the average bed rate is a 3.86, you will get a total of a 699 channels. And the, re and the maximum recording days will be 27 days. And under this uh, test situations, you will have a 5 recording server and 10 BMS and a 21 MVR. This is, act this is the actual result uh, our FA got. And this is another option for our clients. If our client decides to get the hard disk by themselves, here is the recommendation from our FAE. You can have a Western Digital uh, RAID model, or the Seagate Enterprise, or the HGST uh, Ultrastar, and the last one is Japanese uh, brand Toshiba Enterprise. And let's take a quick look of the features, like what kind of features GV Storage System V2 support. And the first one, uh, it has a user-friendly uh, web management interface. Uh, you can, through, through the web management interface, you can do the RAID to how to, to do that, to do uh, how to build up your, your RAID group. And like we just mentioned, each system is equipped with uh, up to 24 bay, so the maximum recording the hard, the hard drive space you can have is up to 144 terabytes per system. Okay, one uh, 144 terabytes per system, and you're gonna have uh, one uh, 1150 terabytes with uh, 192 hard drive uh, connecting up to seven GB expansion system. So it's gonna be the total is gonna be eight, eight systems. One GV storage system, V2, and seven expansion system. And the next feature is uh, this GV system, GV um, storage system V2 support the multiple path and network load balancing. What does this mean? It means that once the system detects uh, any port that being used to connect it to other network, uh, they're gonna if the system because this the system is smart enough to detect any um, detect de defective port. So the system will help the user to rebuild the network to, redistrib to redistribute the network that load balancing for the rest of the ports. And also, once the system detect uh, any one of the hard drive is defective. Uh, you just the only thing you you need, you need to do you just go replace a new one and then this the system will automat auto automatically help you rebuild on the logical drive. And this is the this, this this product is available in the market right now. 
Okay, the next product we're going to talk about is the Juvie products. Uh, this is a little device called a PoE extender. Uh, it supports uh, both the PoE and PoE Plus. And each single PoE extender, it can support up to 100 meters. And the total, the maximum extension it can support is up to 600 meters. By the way, by the way, depends on what PoE and IP cameras you use. And uh, the other good point is no additional power supply required. This is the best part. And this camera, this uh, this uh, little devices is in the market already. So if you are not sure, like under what kind of situ situation or PoE or IP camera you use, here is the chart. Come come from Vision official website. So the next feature is uh, like we talked about in the very beginning. Uh, this is feature. This feature is going to be integrated with the next version of the GV IP utility. So, what are the good advantages from these features? You can actually change the switch, the IP address of the switch, and the device name, and even power on or off in each port. So, through the IP devices utility, you can uh, search this IP address of the of this PoE, and all of the com all of the cameras that connected to this PoE will also be displayed up here. So, uh, not only the IP address of the camera, it also shows the information like IP address, model name, MAC address. Absolute, the best resolutions in our product line for our video server is only up to D1 solution. But in the near features, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna release a products uh, with a four channels, two megapixel, and um, the release date are going to be are going to be released in Q4. So, uh, four channels, two megapixel video server in the near features. We're going to the next topic we're going to talk about is uh, video management software. Uh, so as you guys can see here, all of these are four features that we're going to add on the next coming version, which is 15.1. The first one is the H.265 codec. This, is, um, this version is going to support this codec. And uh, you're going to support a heat map, and you're going to support a, a 90 degree, 270 degree rotation quarter mode. And the last one, uh, this version is going to support outdoor intelligent motion detection. I will go over each features one by one. And the first one is uh, H.265 codec. This uh, system is going to support this codec. Uh, like we uh, mentioned in the previous slide, uh, H.265 codec is basically the, the next generation of the video compression technology after H.264. And the under with the same with the same test environments, similar quality with a different video codec. The left hand side is the H.265 and the right hand side is a video clip taken with the H.264. As you guys can see here, uh, the file size for the H.265 is only 31 megabytes. What is HEMAT? HEMAT is basically a feature that help you identify the hotspot, the store hotspot, the, sorry, the store hotspot or day area or even bottlenecks. So let me show you guys images from IP camera to help you virtualize the people traffic pattern. So you can you can use this information to do the even the market search, market analysis or do the promotion or you can have a better you can have the improve you can improve your customer service is is called quarter mode. So what is quarter mode? Normally the channel, the light image display on the interface is either 4 to 3 or 16 to 9. So what if a client is looking for a deeper feel or deeper feel of view? This is why we add this quarter mode in our next purchase of a VMS, which is a 15.1. 
So as you guys can see here, with the, this feature apply, you can have a, a more deeper feel, more deeper feel of view. The next feature is uh, outdoor intelligent motion detection. So what is the differences between this motion detection and our standard motion detection? The different the differences is with the outdoor intelligent motion detections, the system is going to ignore environmental factors with the object tracking. Means that um, the system is going to ignore water flow. And what about other features that we're going to add on the next versions? Um, for the next versions, 15.1 is going to support the playback with the audio timeline. Or you can play back with the bookmark. This is a very convenient where you, um, because you don't have to go research the, the period you want to play back. And for the third point, uh, so far we only support uh, uh, the normal Aviv, but we so far, we only support the basic features like a video setting, resolution, or FPS. But uh, right now, in the next versions, we're going to support the Unviv profile as. So like what kind of configurations we can support. Uh, you can, uh, through the Unviv profile as, we can do the IO, um, IO setting, or alarm, or motion events, or even video attributes. And uh, the the software, the version for this software is going to be released in Q2, 50.1. So the topic is uh, Edge Recording Manager. For the current versions, it is able to support up to 64 channels. However, if uh, the client who is looking for more than 64 channels, just remember to buy a dongle. And for the coming version, which is 1.1, uh, the, ver the version is going to support multiple live view divisions, and you will support the dual vision as standalone MVR. And also, you're going to uh, you're going to support a remote playback for either AVI format or MPEG format. And for the play mode and control, uh, the, on the edge recording version 1.1, you can either when you do the playback, you can either choose. Um, key Frame by frame or key frame. There are two motion. There are two options you can choose when you do the remote playback. Key by uh, frame by frame or key frame, and uh, you can also you can do the video enhancement on the Edge Recording Manager, like default stabilizer, wide angle, fisheye dewapi, and even PIP PAP. And the uh, next version 1.1 is expected to be released in Q2. The GVI is uh, our application mode for the mobile devices. Uh, as you guys can see here, all of the features here are actually from our client's feedback. And in order to provide or in order to satisfy our client's feedback, we decide to make all of this feature to be real in the next version. So the first one, uh, on the next version, it's going to support layout up to 16. The current version, which is a uh, version 2.1, it only can support six vision on six page on one page. So the total six page, you're gonna have a 36 channels for the current versions. But for the next version, which is 2.2, you're gonna have a 16 divisions per page. So the total channels you're going to have is up to 96 channels. So we also support the 256 PTZ preset point, two-way audio, a playback with audio. And then this version is going to be released in Q2. Next topic we're going to talk about is access control. Stand alone a controller with the reader. You can use use it either uh, to local or cloud, or this is a either a local base or the cloud base uh, standalone controller with the reader. This is a two megapixel with a fisheye lens built in, and it provides you a 50 fps. And in the in the futures, this camera is uh, we're planning to integrate this feature to. Um, our GV Cloud web portal. So, 
in Q4 or next year, you can do the configurations through, through our the MyDruby Cloud portal. So, like, what kind of features we are going to add on the next versions of S managers? As you guys can see here, all of the features listed up here are actually from our client's feedback. And again, we want to respond to our client's feedback, so we decide to add all of them to the next versions. The first one is uh, support car holders pen code for access. Means that you don't have, if you forgot your car, don't worry. The thing you need to type is just type your, uh, is just type your pen code. Like where you go to an ATM, drop your money. This is your personal pen code. And the next one is customized snapshot locations. In the previous versions, if you take a snapshot, you can reassign or re you can relocate the the path you the the path the snapshot is stored to. But in the next versions, you can decide by yourself where you want the snapshot file to be stored to. This is the second word, second feature. And the third feature is apply the same authentication schedule, exit button schedule to all door. Okay, all door. Means that um, in the current versions, when you apply, let's say uh, you have um, a doors controller, and each uh, the schedule, the, each door, the schedule for the, each door is the same, but you have to apply eight times. It takes a lot of time, right? But on the next versions, 4.3, the only thing you need to do is you, know, you just need to apply one time. You just uh, the first, first of all, you just set the schedule for your first door, then you apply the schedule to the rest of the door. It really saves a lot of time. And as now this uh, show the controller input status in the uh, S Manager. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward feature. And on a snapshot, when temper, fire, or hole open, or false open even occur. And the next version for, uh, for the S managers is going to be released in Q2. Okay, the next topic we're going to talk about is uh, GeoVision LPR camera. Currently, we have uh, two types of uh, LPR cameras. This is uh, one of them. This is a 1.3 megapixel camera. It, currently, we have a two types of uh, LPR cameras. This is a one of them. This is a 1.3 megapixel camera. It gives you a 30 FPS with the built-in motorized lens, so you don't have to adjust the lens by, by yourself. And uh, it supports uh, four IR, four I, um, IR LEDs with a distance 10 meters. And the maximum speed this camera support is up to 120 kilometers per second. And this is a this is a capture only camera. Let's go take a look for the next camera. This is the previous one is a capture only camera, and this is a camera for recognitions. And the model name is a, is called LPR1200. This camera is also a 1.3 megapixel camera, and it supports uh, it also supports a motorized lens. And uh, this is a camera with a built-in LPR eng engines. What does this mean? Means that you don't have to connect this camera to either our multi cams or VMS to do the further analysis. This camera can actually recognize by itself. And this camera and uh, the other two differences point with the previous camera. Uh, for this camera, LPR1200 is support ARLEDs, ARLEDs with a distance 20 meters. And the maximum speed this camera support is up to 180 kilometers per, per hour. And the camera, the camera, the, the release date for this camera is expected to in Q3. But for the previous camera, it's already in the market. So, uh, if your client looking for a project that related to parking lot, I think S Manager 4.3 is going to be the best solution for you. 
In the S Manager 4.3, it support it help you monitor the vehicle state time, check-in time, and even check-out time. And it also it help you calculation the total number of cars in the parking lot. And once uh, there is a, a once the system detects the the number of cars exceed the capacity in the parking lot alone will be triggered. Or if uh, the system detects the state time of the vehicle is over a certain period, uh, an alarm will be triggered as well. And the next, uh, the next feature is uh, LPR overview cameras increased to six. Uh, this is basically a uh, project-based project, uh, features. Uh, when you return your car to rental car, um, the rent the car stop, the car stop have uh, to take a picture to make sure there is no scratch or damage on their car. And the only the thing the car stop need to do is just push the button. And there's gonna be six pictures will be taken. And the next, the last feature is. Uh, on this version is going to support additional export format HTML zip. Uh, what does this mean? As you guys can see here, the format with uh, the HTML format with the zip, it's going to provide not only a picture of the car but also the license number of the car. It provides you with these these two information. Okay, uh, the car, exactly the car and the car the license number of the car. Two information could be provided through this uh, format. And for the, um, for the X Manager 4.3, it's expected to be released in Q2.